Trey Wingo is on the phone. Fantastic. Trey Wingo, the host of NFL Live on the Worldwide Leader in Sports here on the Rich Eisen Show. Go figure that. How are you, Trey? Well, I'm feeling a little pudgy, so I want to finish this so I can go to the gym and deflate some weight. Is that what's going on here, Trey? Oh, look, if, if I knew the answer to that, you know uh, what? this has been unbelievable. Do you it's... believe Tom Brady told someone to take a pin to a football, Trey, when it comes down to it? Uh, I don't know what I believe, to be perfectly honest, because my head is swimming in all of this. Okay. But the, bot the bottom line for me is that I find it hard to believe that if there were footballs deflated, A, it happened one time and they just happened to do it in the AFC Championship game, and B, these two guys, Jastrzemski and McNally, said, you know what, let's just try this without telling them and see what happens. Well, I, here's my belief, Trey. I do not believe Tom Brady ever told anybody to take a pin to a football. I think he just created so much pressure on these guys that one day they said, to heck with it, I'm taking a pin to a football, if that's what indeed actually happened. And Brady said after that game, you know what, attaboy, good job, keep them coming that way. And, and did not know somebody took a pin to a football. Many people have accused me of being naive. I haven't seen anything in the Wells Report to say anything otherwise. I don't believe deflating meant losing weight, but I did read some other things in the Wells Report context that made a lot of sense to me, that, that, that if McNally was leaving with the footballs, he left in front of a bunch of people who were NFL officials when he walked out of that room. There's, I, that's that's where I'm standing on this, Trey. I, I, I know you're, you're, you've been surrounded by a bunch of analysts who have been uh, very critical of Brady. Does everybody there believe that Brady really did this? Well, I think that the, there's, there's some people, and specifically Teddy, that feel exactly how you feel. You know, there was a, quite a showdown last week on the show between Damian and, and Teddy, who took completely different uh, perspectives on the idea of what's going on and what has gone on with Tom. Um, look... There's nothing definitive in the Wells report, I agree with you, that says we can say conclusively that, that Tom told these guys to do what they were doing. However, you know, the Wells report said it's more probable than not mm -hmm. that he was generally aware. And I think that's a reasonable uh, expectation. Now, I don't disagree with you on the idea that the science of the Wells report is murky at best. And I think there are things in the, in the voluminous response, Wells report context that, dot com, that do poke some holes, for lack of a better term, in yeah. some of the science nice. in, in the investigation. But I, I do believe, you know, I, let, let's be clear about one thing. The, the, the theory out there that, well, they're, the NFL is doing this to sort of get the domestic violence issue and the other issues off the table. Oh, that's ridiculous. ludicrous. That is ludicrous. ridiculous. Who says that? Well, there's some, you know, Homer McFitzy and Sully McFanboy, and uh, some people are promoting that around there. Sully I mean, you know, the McFanboy. I, I mean, love the, that one, the, Trey. The Boston Herald's, the front page was, why do they hate us? And it was a picture of four Lombardi trophies, <laughs> and, you know, with little parentheses, gee, wonder what it must be. I mean, that's not this at all. Let's be clear. You think Roger Goodell is enjoying this? No. I mean, Robert Kraft is one of, was, I guess we should say at this point, one of the most ardent supporters. I mean, they, they were sync. They were compatico, man. This brings him no joy. This brings the NFL no joy to be doing all this after a Super Bowl championship with these guys. So, I mean, I think that they were brought, something was brought to their attention, and they're looking into it. Now, you could make a very compelling argument how they have looked into it, and how the Patriots have responded to them looking into it. It's just made the whole thing cross over into the theater of the absurd, and it's not ending anytime soon. But that's sort of where we are right now, man. It's, it's basically like the old Saturday Night Live skit, point, counterpoint, with Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin without uh -oh. certain choice words. Yes, exactly. Be careful. Be careful. Yeah, I stopped myself just in time. Hey, Trey, I mean... <sighs> When you're sitting there hosting NFL Live and this is all over the rundown, what, what, what do you think, man? I, mean, I bang my head against the wall. Do you really? I mean, well, I mean, do, do you want to be talking about this on your show every day? I am a big, I'm a big advocate of air, sir. <laughs> <laughs> See? That didn't make sense, right? No, I got it. I got it. I just, look, it, is it, it's something that everybody's talking about, so of course we're going to be talking Everybody about it. Everybody is, right? I mean, I mean, think about it. I mean, Bill, uh, Bill O'Reilly is 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 now doing this on Fox News. We've crossed over into some parallel universe where suddenly this is the only thing anybody really wants to talk about. I just wish Roger and Robert could get together in a room and said, "Look, this whole thing is making us all look silly. It's making the championship that the Patriots just won legitimately, let's be clear about that, yeah. look silly. It's making the NFL look a little silly." Now they're not going to do it because I think that bridge is 
is torched. But what? Even if they do get in the room, there's nothing that what, what, there's nothing that could be done. This report's out there. Yeah, this report's I know. out there, and but, and this report does, as you point out meet the the uh, the standard of evidence that the the NFL has used uh historically to suspend people right. it does meet that level it, it doesn't does. meet the law and order standard of evidence right no that but we they don't see. have to right exactly so I don't know where there, there is no out here there's no out here the only out I mean it, we're trying to figure that out outside of a lawsuit Okay, which is you know going the Al Davis oh, route against Pete Rozelle, and that was one of the most awkward Super Bowl ceremonies ever. When Rozelle handed him the Lombardi Trophy right. while they were suing each other for trying to move the team from Oakland to L.A., um, the only outside of a lawsuit, the only out is that the Patriots have to accept it. I mean, that's it. You know, they can appeal the process, and whatever the appeal is, that's what that's what's going to be the appeal, and that's it. And if you're if you're Tom Brady, and if you're Robert Kraft, and you're all these Patriots employees who cooperated to some degree, and Tom didn't want to give up his phone, let's be honest, if you go the lawsuit route, you don't have that option anymore. Right. Everything's out on the table. And I would ask the crafts, and I would ask Tom, is that what you want? Because right. I don't think that's going to make it any better. All right. Trey Wingo joining me here now. And you know, you know, odds are that the commissioner is going to be handing the Lombardi Trophy to Bob Kraft next year, too. You just know it. You just know it. You know it. You know it. greatest. You know it. Garoppolo's going to go four and zero. Jimmy, uh, what what Sully McFanboy? Uh, he's going to get upset about Jimmy. Jimmy G Jimmy's not going to get them upset though. No, you Jimmy, know Jimmy, you know he's going to go four and zero, right? Yeah. You know it's going to happen. It, it's you know it's going to happen. It would be the right, uh, honestly, I I would I would not. I would want to miss that for the world. <laughs> I would want to see that exchange. Good thing you've got the job to, to, to not miss it, Trey. Oh, my God, it would be priceless. Or are you in the stadium for the Super Bowl? Or are you the, yeah, yeah, I do, the, uh, I, I do the, uh, the MVP interview after the game. So, you are, yeah, so you're there. on the yeah. field. You're out, yeah. there, you're out there on the field picking confetti out of, out of the hair. What's left of the hair. Oh, yeah. don't say that to me, Trey. Come on. <laughs> I'm talking about me, not you. No, I know you're talking about you, but I've known you for wh – when did you first get to ESPN? 97. So you know you were 95, 94? What would I, – I remember the towels. You remember the towels, Trey? Let's get oh, into the towels. Absolutely. Now, what happened? I remember you said something that you were going to be a towel – like when you when you came from St. Louis, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Here's how it all happened. Okay, and right. This is once again – you know, this is this is funny that you're saying this now. Let's because do it. It's, context is important, Let's, much as in the Wells Report. Yes. Context.com is yes. important. Yes. Okay. Yes. Local local TV anchor in St. Louis yes. and the the media critic for the St. Louis Post Dispatch called me up and wanted to talk to me about you know moving to ESPN. The first thing he says to me, he says, is hey, is the new guy? Do you have to go get Dan Patrick's coffee every day? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of making a joke. And yep. I said, well. I think as the new guy, I don't have to be the towel boy too long. And then we went on to this entire discussion about what I was doing and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, starting on ESPN News and wanting to move on to Sports Center and all this junk. Oh, yeah. And the line came out in the paper uh, about he's starting on ESPN News and moving to Sports Center with a quote, I hope I don't have to be the towel, towel boy, boy too, too long. long. Yeah. We Which were... had nothing to do <laughs> with, with, with the way he used it in the article. We were passing because it around going like, what? Everybody Who is I, this guy? I, I still have the towel, by the way. <laughs> I still have the towel. Who put the towels on your on your chair? Was it uh, Jason Jackson? It, 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 was I, it I don't Jay know. Jackson? There was one. There was one that was signed by everybody. I mean, you, yep. Stu, we signed Richard Gross, yep. Dave Feldman, Chuck Sheldy. Garfine. Oh gosh. Bill Pito, Dave Revson. What do you have? Uh, yeah. Status, please. Yes, that's right. We all. I think Linda. I think Linda. Linda probably signed a towel too. Yeah. Dan. Dan Absolutely signed that towel. I may yeah. have I may have been the one to bring the towel into his office to sign. Can yeah. I may photo? have no actually you know what? I did I deny I deny knowing anything about the towels. It and I and I defy you to 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 catch me red handed about the towels. Like it's more probable it, than it is not, not more probable. It's I'm more probable, probable than not. No, Trey, 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 Trey. Yeah. I was generally aware of the towel. Well, I was generally aware of it too. Trust me. <laughs> Trey, can you take a can you take a photo of that towel and tweet it I, out today? In fact, I'm putting it on as soon as as soon as we're done with this, and after I go deflate myself in the gym, I, I absolutely get a picture. Now of that there towel. is is there Excellent. really a gym there now, Trey? Yeah, Gold. Remember Gold's gym that used to be next to us? Yeah. Okay, they bought that lot just oh. for the parking lot. Are you serious? Yeah, and they and they kept the gym. It's freaking great. It's, it's, is, a, it's is awesome. the is the racquetball court still there? Uh, the racquetball court is now part of the VTL, Rich, the videotape library. What? Yeah, the racquetball's gone. That's gone. Yeah. Because that's what th there used to be. 
one like two treadmill, one treadmill, a stairmaster. Yeah. Back from in like the day. 1940, right? This was this was a with very, an eight track old, an eight track yeah. tape machine probably next yeah. to it, <laughs> Three real to real, and a racquetball court. But yeah. seriously, and, like it was a 1980s movie. Yeah, uh, how they figured? Okay, we'll use a racquetball court. Was the one I always got me. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, because the thing about the space needed for a racquetball court, you could put so much more equipment in there, and we always had the racquetball court in there. Trey, I miss you, bud. Oh, I, I see you like two or three times a year, my friend. Always a pleasure. Well, you mean you don't watch the show every day? Is that what you're saying? That's, I mean in person. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, we, I'm, I, we... I'm generally aware of your show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, more, it's more probable than not that I'm watching the you show. You mean I'm not on a proc, Trey? I'm not on like proc 15 there in oh, Bristol? See, now we need to explain proc. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. It's a channel. <laughs> It's a channel. It's a process and the server because the signal was so weak coming into Bristol years ago, they had to amplify it with something called a proc. Yep. So everything came in, all the games came in. I thought proc 23. Yeah, that's right. And I, I think yeah. that's what I watched the Allen Iverson practice rant on. He's We're coming on at about, about that. Yeah, he's coming on at about 13 minutes. There you go. Allen Iverson. Hey, listen, Trey, uh, you should pull a, go uh, a good fellas. Uh, you've been away a long time, Rich. I, I don't <laughs> fold towels no more. I don't fold towels no more. Uh, you don't. Not for me anymore. Atta boy. Thanks, Trey. You got it, pal. Take care of yourself. That's Trey Wingo at Wingo Z. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.